All right, so it's Monday morning. I am back in the Geisel Library in the O'Rourke St. Anselm collection and getting ready for the day. I've already been in here about half an hour um, just doing the typical morning, tidying things up, taking care of emails, um, thanking subscribers uh, on YouTube, um, addressing a few comments here and there. Got up this morning um, ready to... Uh, to have a sort of leisurely morning uh, and then head up the hill and, and hit the ground running. As it turned out, the, um, the crews that are putting in the windows were ready to work on our building around um, uh, 7, 10 or so. So as I was making coffee, they were knocking on the door, wanting to come in. Um, they had their uh, machines going, and fortunately for me, as I put on, on one of my Facebook comments and, and Google Plus comments, um, the smell of diesel exhaust actually in the morning has a nostalgic um, connotation for me. It reminds me of my, my days when I was in the, uh, the 16th Engineer Battalion, which was a mechanized unit, uh, part of the 1st Armored Division, back in, when I was a kid. Um, you know, kid like uh, 19, 20 years old in, in Germany. So it doesn't really, you know, get to me that much, and, and I can work in, a, you know, a lot of circumstances that are not ideal for most academics. So I, you know, was doing some reading, eating my muffins and having my coffee so I could feel awake and alive. And then I, I you know, took a shower, got dressed, um, started getting ready to head out. And I got into a conversation with one of the, the guys who was working, um, not actually on the crew. He's a subcontractor, as it turns out. And we talked for about 15 minutes. I'd, I'd run into him in the parking lot on Friday, and he thought that I was a musician because I was carrying my, my tripod in the case, which I suppose looks like an instrument case. So we got to, we got to chatting on Friday for a couple minutes and I gave him my card and you know he was interested when he found out that I did YouTube videos on, on philosophy thought that was a cool thing and so I you know said well you know check them out um, so he was the guy who was who was up there uh, working you know briefly in the apartment and then in the, the stairwell he, he does some of their, their their finer you know more complex work for that that company and we got to talking and it turns out that he's from the area but he also has you know homes down in in Florida because he's engaged he seems like a very busy guy he's engaged in you know buying and flipping and and uh, uh, you know always uh, on the on the make so to speak and we talked about quite a few topics I, I like having conversations with with ordinary people uh, non-academics um, who have you know some interesting stories to tell and some interesting insights about what's going on so that's that's really where um, at least if you're doing philosophy, particularly moral philosophy, that's where you need to stay grounded. <laughs> Otherwise, you know, if you're just talking to fellow academics, um, you're kind of limiting your, your scope and your relevance, and you're probably not doing as, uh, philosophy as well, you know. Somebody who I think about um, who not only writes about that as a problem, but really exemplifies that in his own life and his practice um, is Alistair McIntyre, who um, he's kind of like a, a Socrates type in that way. He'll 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 have conversations uh, once you get past the you know kind of uh, somewhat dour seeming at times exterior. He's very jovial and and willing to engage in uh, you know very thoughtful and interesting conversations with with all sorts of people. Um, and you can tell that it really paid dividends for his work as a philosopher. All right, so enough chit-chat about uh, the morning and speculations about <laughs> philosophy. What have I got going on today? Busy day. I think the library is open until 6 o'clock or 8 o'clock, so I've got a full day ahead in the morning. I'm going through abstracts. As soon as I finish this, I'm going through abstracts till about you know 1230 or so. Um, not, not going through abstracts, going through dissertations and writing abstracts. Um, and then um, in the afternoon, well, then I'm going to have lunch. Um, and I need to do a few things during lunch, like come up with my, my questions for interviews. 
um, do a little reading. I brought some some Thomas Aquinas on uh, the emotions to, to, to go back over because I'm going to start working on, on that paper a bit later today. Oh, here it is right here. Fear and anger and, you know, confidence and a despair and hope as well. The emotions that deal with the difficult good. Um, so that's... That's up to the afternoon, and then in the afternoon, uh, around 2 o'clock, Kevin McMahon and Monty Brown are coming over, and I'm going to interview them here in the Geisel Library room. Um, I've already also got locked in uh, Father John Fortin, so that's at least three people being interviewed for the, the, uh, the video about you know the St. Anselm Institute and its work and its history. Um, I'm hoping I can get James Rourke uh, when he's here for the conference. I'm also hoping I can get Kevin Staley. He's a hard guy to catch. I'm going to give him a call, actually, right after I get off of this video. Um, and then after those, those videos are done, I need to... I'll probably should check in, you know, by here with, with the video thing. But then I need to hunker down and um, go through all the Marcel-related materials that I gathered um, from the library stacks looking for stuff for the the article on Marcel and the Christian philosophy debates that I started writing last night and made uh, about you know three four solid pages of progress on um, oh that's right <laughs> I also have so part of it is coming from this this book which is my book um, where I actually have a whole section um, devoted to Marcel, yeah, here it is, Regarding the Spirit of Medieval Philosophy by Monsieur Etienne Gilson in La Nouvelle Revue de Jeune, um, 1932. He did some book reviews on, on Gilson's uh, Spirit of Medieval Philosophy, which was Gifford Lectures at the time. Very important uh, intervention. So I'm writing that for the, uh, the new uh, journal that was started by the Gabriel Marcel Society. Um, I don't know if they have their first issue out, but if, it, if I can get it done on time, then it can be in the first issue, which would be really cool. If not, it can be in the second issue, which is also pretty cool, too. Um, one of my areas of, of, of work, you know, not only do I work on Marcel as an existentialist and as, to a certain degree, a virtue ethicist, but he also plays a role in these important Christian philosophy debates that I, I work on. Um, so that's, that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be working on Marcel stuff, probably reading my way through some other Anselm related things as well, having to do with prayer and, um, outlining my, my Thomas Aquinas talk, which is coming up in about two and a half weeks. Um, so that's what's, uh, slated for the day. I don't even know what's going on in the evening. Uh, I'll worry about that later on in the day. Right, so it's Monday afternoon. It's about uh, 1.35 or so, day 6. Um, since um, the morning where I got a lot of work done on, on writing abstracts and providing key terms for some of these dissertations, I'm very happy about. I then um, went to uh, noon prayer with the monks and one other layperson. Um, it's part of the Liturgy of the Hours that the, the monks say daily. I used to say the Liturgy of the Hours daily, and I found it to be very valuable, and I like the way that the monks do it in a very slow, contemplative way, um, not like the rushing that I often tend to do, unfortunately, when I, when I do say it. And then after that, I um, had a little chat with the other guy who was there who, who turned out to be a professor, a retired professor in theology, then um, went to have lunch, did some texting with my, my wife about her day, and uh, read some Thomas Aquinas, primarily on the emotion of hope and how it works. Um, I then went to um, the bookstore and the business office, just to like, you know, see what they had in the bookstore, maybe buy some things for my kids and my wife, and to see whether they... Um, they had my, my check ready for my, my per diem and travel um, and, and uh, you know, got the information from, from them about that. Um, then I went to the library and I had a little chat with um, one of the librarians and she clued me into a book 
A Porcine History of Philosophy and Religion, which has uh, several parts, classic Greek pigs, pigs of the ancient medieval church, Protestant pigs, modern philosophical pigs, and 21st century pigs. So I'll, I'll uh, probably take some snapshots of these because they're, they're pretty funny and I'll upload them later on today. So in um, about 20 minutes or so, Monty Brown and Kevin McMahon are going to be here. And I'm planning on shooting some interview footage with them, talking about the St. Anselm Institute and their involvement in it and what, you know, the Institute does and, and um, what they've got coming up, uh, since it's, you know, a pretty cool institution. Um, so I'm, I'm just preparing now some of my questions for them and getting my, my head right for that. I think I might do a little bit of uh, work looking at this this particular dissertation, non-existence modalities in Anselm's ontological argument, if I, if I can get some of that, uh, you know, dug through and, and get some of the abstracting done for it, um, and some of the keywords done for it before I, I actually get to uh, doing the interviews. Otherwise, after that, we're looking at an afternoon in which I'm going to continue doing some of this, read some more uh, dissertations that have to do with my own uh, particular topics that I'm working on with Anselm, and I'm going to dig into a stack of Gabriel Marcel uh, works and secondary literature on him that I've, I've gotten out of the stacks that I want to like dig, I want to go through in order to find references to um, some of the issues that I'm, I'm writing about in my, my article that I'm, I'm working on while I'm here as well. So, busy day, but um, it's going along quite well. Uh, it's kind of overcast. It's a good day to be inside. And um, check in later on. If you've been watching these, you've heard me mention noon prayer a few times. And so I wanted to take you on a little trip to the St. Anselm Abbey Church so that you could actually see the, the space in which we're doing that. Because this is a really wonderful um piece of, of architecture and the stained glass is really amazing from an artistic perspective, which is very important. Uh, people often think that, you know, monasteries are just about asceticism, but the, for the Benedictine vision, here's the, the main worship space. It's very important to have a place like this, simple and yet beautiful. Um, this is where they have the, the masses, and, and in the back is where they do the Liturgy of the Hours. Here's some of the stained glass windows from the back part, which has a bunch of uh, uh, pews where, where we sit and do the Liturgy of the Hours. This is one of three of the main windows. This represents the first person of the Trinity, and it's, it's creation, uh, bringing order out of, out of nothing. This is the second person of the Trinity. You can see, a, a, if, if you know what to look for here, a sort of representation of baptism. And here we have the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity, um, the traditional red as the tongues of fire coming down. Um, again, here's some more of the stained glass windows from the area where the Liturgy of the Hours are, are prayed. And now I'm going to take you past some of the windows so you can actually see the workmanship close up. Um, this is exiting the, the church on the, uh, I suppose if you're facing out, it would be the right side. Um, you can see just how intricate and how much work went into these, these beautiful compositions. Now we're actually approaching my favorite one of these lower windows. Um, I'm not quite sure why it's my favorite. <laughs> It'd be hard put to give a description. It's the morning of day seven, Tuesday. Uh, this is the second to last morning that I will be waking up here and having, well, I'm not gonna have breakfast here uh, because I'm actually out of muffins, I'm out of juice, I'm out of coffee, I'm actually having tea this morning. So, um, yeah, I'll just have breakfast up at the cafe next time. This is my last full day of, of work uh, on this, this uh, residency because the metaphysics colloquium starts tomorrow. So that is going to end effectively my, my time using the library because I'll be very busy you know, in the presentations and, and talking with the other participants. 
Uh, I have to pack up everything tonight uh, so I can move out in the morning because I'll be staying in another dorm where they put all of us uh, colloquium participants much closer to the Dana Center, just a short walk across a parking lot, um, as opposed to the, you know, about five to ten minute walk from here. So um, I didn't get as much done as I would have liked yesterday, in part because by the time that I got home, Around six o'clock, I was pretty wiped out. I had some, you know, some dinner, um, and then um, just, you know, I read a bit, watched a, a few shows on Hulu, talked with my wife, uh, and then crashed out pretty early, which is good because I'm more rested today. Uh, haven't slept all that well except for last night, uh, the entire time that I've been here. You know how it is once your your body's in, in your 40s, different beds, different environments, it's hard to get good sleep, um, and then that takes kind of a toll. So I'm feeling very, very rested, um, but I'm also feeling anxious about getting as much work done as possible because I'm, I'm the kind of guy who tends to have a lot of projects hanging, and I can feel them, you know, almost palpably on my back. Um, gotten quite a bit done, you know. Um, I, I did, you know, polish up the paper on Curtis Homo, sent that off to uh, Monty and Kevin. Um, I've got my presentation ready for my, my uh, talk on Saturday uh, about Epicureans and anger. All I need to do is create some handouts for that, and I'll probably do that when I get home. Uh, I'll do that, you know, Friday or so. Um, I've gotten a lot of video content shot, um, including some interview video with uh, Monty and Kevin, uh, but also, you know, St. Anselm's pros, uh, Proslogion, um, some Hegel stuff. I think I'll shoot some more Hegel uh, possibly tonight um, so that I've got that in, you know, in reserve as I'm, I'm moving ahead. Um, what else? Um, you know, I've got some, some work done on the Marcel paper, um, and uh, I started outlining my, my Thomas Aquinas anger paper, which I won't actually be reading as such. I'll be presenting the paper, which means that I'll, I'll give sort of a summary, but I, need, I still need to have something written for, for um, those who want something written, and because the papers are going to be included in an in anthology, I think, if I remember right. If not, I'll just publish it somewhere else. So today, uh, a lot of work ahead. I, it's um, almost 8 o'clock, and uh, I, I need to get really moving in a minute. I am <coughs> currently you know, going through emails. Um, my students will have handed in. I'm actually still teaching an online ethics class as well, so it hasn't been a complete break. Um, and, and students often need a lot of hand-holding, uh, surprisingly, uh, a surprising amount of it. Um, so that's been taking up some time. So I'm going to have to do some grading because I like to, especially early in the semester, it's very important to get feedback to students right away. So if they're, if they're not doing things right, they can start, you know, realizing that and start paying attention to the, the materials that they've been given and, and start doing things correctly. Um, usually it takes the sting of one bad grade to bring that home. And then for those who are actually on the right track, they, a lot of them, you know, need confirmation that, hey, you're, you're doing the right thing, keep this up. So I'm going to have to do some grading today, um, hopefully going to get some, some writing done, um, and uh, as far as video work goes, I, I will probably wait till I come back here to the apartment um, before I do any of that, other than these sort of video updates during the day. All right, I'm back in the Institute. It is around uh, 1020, and I've got a stack of Marcel related material that I'm planning on going through, skimming, combing through, looking for references to things that might have to do with the paper I'm writing on Marcel and the Christian philosophy debates and the broader issue of Marcel's conception of Christian philosophy. Um, at 12 o'clock I'm going to head back over to the chapel uh, for noon prayer, and then I'm going to have some lunch at the cafe. So I've got a bit of time to do this. Um, Library is open till six. No, yeah, six today. So I, I do have enough time to go through 
and um, continue doing some of the documentation work that I need to do for the the project that I came up here, you know, uh, commissioned by the, the archives and the St. Anselm Institute to help out with. Um, starting to see, you know, light at the end of the tunnel. There's more that, that would need to be done in order to, like, fully see it through, but we've only got so much time. And, you know, we're getting something accomplished. But for the, for the moment, they're off camera, so you can just hear them. I've got this stack of uh, Marcel stuff to go through. Gabriel Marcel is... Um, somebody who I very much like to, to read and think about. He's difficult to write on in part because he's, he's a non-systematic, deliberately uh, anti-systematic philosopher. So he's, his writing is in, in many ways more like um, musical movements where you have to like see the same themes coming up and getting different treatments from, from movement to movement. But he's, he's well worth reading. He's well worth spending time on. Uh, at lunch, I'm going to be continuing my rereading of Thomas's discussions of anger as I prepare for that. I had a great insight for how to begin the talk. Um, I need to write it down before I forget about it. And uh, that's, that's where we stand right now. So that's what's going on today. Um, and I'll talk about it, you know, more stuff when more stuff comes up. It's Wednesday morning, day seven, the last day of my research residency, which was unfortunately all too short, but um, I got quite a bit done during it. Um, I still have two more dissertations to go through, write abstracts for, do keywords, one of which is actually, here we go, Kate Rogers, who's a, a major Anselm scholar. Um, somebody who, who I've met and interacted with and who I like quite a bit. Um, her dissertation, St. Anselm of Canterbury on Divine and Human Ideas. Um, I've read through parts of it before, and I've also read her, her work, The Neoplatonic Metaphysics and Epistemology of Anselm of Canterbury, which I've drawn on uh, in the past. Um, so I'm looking forward to spending, well, I've got about maybe 45 minutes that I can devote to, to this one. And then I've got this uh, one that I'm not looking forward quite so much to, Divine Freedom, um, which is on you know, Anselm and uh, God, and it has to do with you know, various uh, views on that, and uh, it looks like quite a bit of analytic philosophy mixed in with this, which tends to make Anselm quite boring, um, but we'll see what, how, how it works. Um, so I, I packed up everything up and put it in my car because we're going to be staying in a different place on the other side of campus for the Metaphysics Colloquium, which starts this afternoon. Um, I may shoot a bit more footage after this, but uh, this is probably uh, e either the last or close to last of the things that I'm going to record for the trip. So it's been very successful, had a lot of great conversations, not just with other people involved with, with Anselm, but library staff, um, some of the, the, the other you know maintenance staff who work here and painters, um, some of the, the people in, in other uh, places and, and uh, yeah. I perhaps spent a bit more time in conversations than I ought to have, but that's really one of my, um, you know, it's one of my traits. So I like people. I like finding out about them and, and you know, finding out what, what goes on in their life and comparing notes and that sort of thing. I think that's an important part of life. So that, that's what I do. Um, so I've got my my uh, notes all typed up. Um, I just have to add a few more things. And over the weekend, I'll probably be producing the report for uh, for the archivist, Keith Chevalier, who wasn't able to be here because he had a, a child born uh, over this, this period. It was really good for him and his wife. But I'm going to be developing a report uh, advising the the center on you know what other dissertations they might want to get, um, where they can find the abstracts 
for for quite a few of these dissertations, although that's going to involve some data entry on their part, which is kind of kind of boring stuff. And then giving them a number of abstracts and keywords for quite a few of these these dissertations that they've got. So it's it's going to be <clears throat> quite quite useful for them. Um, I'm looking forward to the metaphysics colloquium starting. To this time, it's actually about artwork, aesthetics, and and beauty. So an area where I've got some real interest, but I've never really done much much writing, and I sometimes feel a little bit out of my element. Um, so it's going to be pretty good. We're going to do some more interviews as well. <clears throat> One with Kevin Staley a little bit later today. Um, hopefully with Jim Rourke. Uh, and I've got Father John Fortin down for an interview in this space on Thursday, tomorrow, the last day of the, of the colloquium.